Blacksmithing and Clothier skills are so similar to one another, the workflow is almost identical. So we're going to put the two together. Uh, and this is going to work in your favor later on in the game as well when you start making set items. You'll be able to travel out to the same hidden crafting station site and from there you'll be able to make uh, the cloth, the leather and the metal sets all from the same location. Now as far as character choices go for a blacksmith clothier, and this rule pretty much goes for all three uh, of your crafters, you want a character class uh, and a character race that's going to be able to level quickly and independently from everybody else as well. I recommend a sorcerer or a healer. Healers in this game, in my opinion, are quite overpowered. They hit like trucks and they've got massive survivability as well. You're going to need, um, by the time you've maxed your skills out, you'll need about 19 points for blacksmithing. 22 if you want uh, the hireling skill as well uh, and you'll need 20 points for the clothier skill as, uh, for the clothier class as well 23 if you want the hireling for that as well so you're looking at around 45 points all up that you're going to have to have in your character uh, so you want one that can adventure that can go out there and get those points bearing in mind that you can also get points from um, sky shards and doing uh, a lot of um, faction quests as well will also give you extra points too this character is level 28 uh, and i'm only two points shy of, of what i need in order to get um, everything maxed out now I keep all the materials for blacksmith and clothier in the bank uh, for a couple of reasons. The first of which is I can access them from any point across Tamriel without actually having to carry them. And you're going to be building a lot of stuff as well, so you want as much bank space, uh, as, as much inventory space available to you as you can. Otherwise you're going to be running back and forth and that's going to get tiresome pretty quick. The second is it means that you can do writs on all of your characters, and why wouldn't you? Effectively, every time a character completes a writ, they will get uh, a small amount of cash, which builds up when all your characters are doing it every day. Um, and also from the, re the reward, they, they will get a, a small collection of materials. They have a chance of getting rare and elite tempers, uh, which is going to speed the process right up for you, and is also an excellent way to make cash. And they've got a chance of getting survey maps as well, which show the location of uh, some super harvesting nodes uh, in a particular zone relevant to the level. So if uh, you're doing level one writs, you'll be doing, um, you'll be um, finding maps that point to places in Stonefalls or um, Glenumbra and, and all of that. And they'll have seven nodes of that level, uh, each of which will give double the yield of a normal harvesting node plus one node from the next level up as well, which also gives the double yield as well. So it's a worthwhile process. Power leveling is based on two factors, efficiency and effectiveness. Now when we apply this to crafting or maxing out our crafting in the Elder Scrolls, what we're looking for is a perfectly struck balance between the amount of resources consumed versus the amount of experience points returned every time the operation is completed. Experience gain in crafting in the Elder Scrolls is based entirely on the level of the item that you've crafted. It's got nothing to do with other factors like the amount of resources consumed in the process or an estimated value or weight of the item. The shop value doesn't matter. It's simply the level of the item crafted. So what that means effectively is at level 1, the uh, or any level, the item that consumes the least amount of resources is the most efficient path for you. And just to break this down, uh, have a look over here. We've got an iron greatsword, level 1, using 5 iron ingots per operation, while a dagger only requires 2 iron ingots to, to build. So what that means is for every great sword that I built, I could have built 2.5 daggers. I could have got 2.5 times the experience just by focusing on these. A crafting an iron caps out at level 14. That's the highest level item you can create when using iron as a resource, which means that the next tier unlocks at 16 and builds up to 24. If jumping from steel to orichalcum, you see orichalcum starts at 26. The increments of 6 as far as crafting goes, as far as the curve for experience return versus the amount of resources consumed, uh, it spikes, it peaks at 6 and then steadily declines off until it hits the end of its tier. So if I was to make steel daggers, the most, uh, the most efficient and effective path I could use would be to make level 16 daggers. I'm going to get the maximum amount of experience while using the absolute minimum amount of materials required to craft for that tier. And while each 
time I level up, I'll be getting more experience for um, the item that I craft. The amount of resources that I use steadily climbs, and that it drags that curve down until you reach the end. A level 24 steel dagger is the least efficient item I could possibly craft for that tier. So as far as critical pathing goes, as far as um, finding the most efficient power leveling method uh, for crafting in the Elder Scrolls, the blacksmithing, clothier, and for woodworking, to find the item that requires the least amount of resources to create per tier, create the lowest level item in that tier, which means you'll have the most, you, you'll use the least amount of resources per operation, but you'll get a respectable amount of experience points every time. Follow those two simple rules, you cannot go wrong. You also get uh, experience for deconstructing items as well. So effectively you could make a bunch of items, say daggers, uh, put them in your backpack, go straight to the deconstruction screen and start busting them down again. You'll get a return on your materials, plus you'll get a little experience for doing it as well. Interestingly enough in this game, you get more experience points for deconstructing uh, items that have been made by other people. Uh, it's it's quite a substantial difference from deconstructing your own, and this in itself is a valid strategy in um, in actually leveling your um, any trade skill that has deconstruction as an option. It also works for enchanting as well as woodworking, uh, blacksmith and clothing, obviously too. So. Um, some ways that you could use this is is make a buddy in your guild, join a, a, a guild that has uh, high level crafters in there, and um, strike up some deal. Either either buy the materials or accumulate the materials and send them off to this other person so that they can build items for you. Uh, and then when they mail those items back, you can break them down. Now level doesn't matter. Uh, for example, you could be a tier one crafter. Somebody could send you a tier four item. You can deconstruct that item. You'll get a massive spike of experience for doing it as well however since that is out of your range as a crafter there's a there's a three tier difference you're not going to recover any material so be aware of that now intricate items are also worth their weight in gold as well you can find them in most of the um, guild stores around tamriel people selling um, intricate items that they've either looted or ones that they've gotten as rewards for completing writs as well intricate items give a much higher return on, on um, crafting experience when you deconstruct them now i've had success as well with contacting players within guilds that i've joined who've maxed out their crafting skills who still routinely do their writs every day and they and they do it for um for elite tempers uh, and also for the money obviously that you get or any recipes but many of these um Ritz will also pay them with um, uh, with intricate items as well, and since they maxed out the absolute highest level items that you can get from from crafting, so uh, if that's outside your crafting range, make a deal with these people, get them to send them to you, COD if necessary, and break those down, and you will get an enormous amount of, of crafting experience for those too. About every third or fourth day, I'll take my highest level character, which has the keen eye skill uh, in blacksmithing, clothier, woodworking, and also in alchemy. And I'll hit a tier one zone. If I'm um, farming in Pact, I'll be hitting Dalmora. Uh, for Covenant, I'll go to Betnik, the island of Betnik, and Kanathi's Roost if I'm using an Aldmeri Dominion character. And I'll go through and I'll harvest for about an hour. I'll get as many T1 materials as I can, either for an hour or until I hit 200 um, metal resources. Take those back, drop them all in the bank, and then what I'll do is I will take my crafted, my highest level one that I've got, and go in there and refine those resources down. Now, for, for a couple of reasons. The first is that um, depending on the level of my... Um, where are we? Let's have a look. Clothing, my unraveling skill, or blacksmithing, my metal extraction skill. Um, the higher they are, if they're maxed out, I've got a chance of getting legendary level tempers each time that I perform a um, refining operation. And those things would pay enormously. Generally, they're a minimum 3,000. But depending on how the economy is going, they sell for up to five, even 6,000 gold as well. So that's money in the bank. That's a reward for that. The second payoff for me is that all my characters, which will all my other alts, which will be around tier one in that crafting skill, as it's not a non-focal skill, are able to perform writs every day um, using those materials that are stockpiled. Now, those materials will also pay with other materials, um, and um, they'll also pay with survey maps and that sort of stuff as well. Plus, again, there's a second chance there to get. Um, 
materials as well. And just by doing those writs on all my characters, every day I'm looking at a return of a minimum of around 4,000 gold just for blacksmithing and clothier, which again can be um, used and ploughed back into crafting by purchasing materials um, from um, guild stores all across Tamriel and that will keep your main crafter in business and working and minimize the amount of time that you need to be spending in harvesting materials at a higher level. Done it effectively, crafting will pay for itself and then some. You should be able to profit on top of it as well. And that concludes blacksmithing. Uh, look, if you've got any other tips or tricks in there, um, then by all means, please post them in the, in the comment section. I do read that. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can to incorporate them into a, an updated video down the line as well. Uh, look, if you got anything out of just from watching this blacksmithing um, video uh, or section of the video, please don't be afraid to hit the like button down the bottom there and also subscribe to my channel. I promise you more.